Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. You're here with Blue Mira, and my name is Kim Brown, and I work in marketing here. And today I'm here with Matt Warner, who's our chief technology officer and someone who I am thrilled to get to work with because he is an authority on a whole lot of topics and really uh, sets a great standard here for us at the company. And is, is uh, in addition to our chief technology officer, he's our co-founder and brings about two decades of cybersecurity experience to us. Uh, prior to founding Glumira, um, Matt served as director of security services at an MSSP and actually developed the threat detection and response platform at that time when he saw an opening in the market and an opportunity to develop something that would specifically fill a niche that SMBs had, uh, the small and medium businesses had for easy and cost-effective security solutions. Uh, the success of that is what led him on to, to, to found Glumira and then go on ahead and scale the platform. And uh, a little bit about that scaling is, uh, you know, kind of an, uh, a result of that scaling is something that you'll see us talking about today. Mm -hmm. As we, uh, of course, have been defining ourselves as a SIM or security information and event management and uh, moving into the world of XDR or extended detection and response. And what I'd like to do is go on ahead and have us kick things off with Matt. Matt, uh, welcome to the webinar. And um, I wanted to say hi. Hi. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Good, are you ready to be peppered with questions nonstop I'm today? I, I'm very ready. I think you know one day we could even turn this into like a call-in radio show. And it could be like a whole thing. I could see it. I could yeah, see it. So. And that I, that would be fun for us. And uh, and people, I think, would really enjoy it. But we'll see today. Uh, I have um, the exciting job of handing the questions to you that people post in. So to our friends out in the audience, uh, first of all, thank you for taking your time to join us. We know you have a lot of things you can decide to do, and we're really happy yes. that you're taking time to be with us here today. And you can use, there is a, a chat box that you can use here in your Zoom screen. There's also a QA, and a and I will monitor both of them and, and make sure that we're uh, getting these questions over to Matt. Sure. Uh, before we go on ahead and get into the questions, and as you're formulating all your great questions, I want to mm -hmm. see who can stump Matt, basically, because it's uh, uh, pretty tough to do. Pretty um, good at guessing, so I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> So what I want to do is, Matt, give you an opportunity to share. I know you've got a few slides here, and I want to yes. give you an opportunity to share those and to kind of give us an introduction, yes. and uh, then we'll go on ahead and get right into the questions. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, and thank you, everyone, for being here again. Uh, by all means, consider the questions you want to ask. Um, happy to answer any and all things. Well, you know, maybe not everything, but we'll, we'll see what you, what you throw at me, uh, and I'll see what I can get for you. Um, and as uh, as Kim said, I am the CTO and co-founder of Blumira. Uh, Blumira is really driven from my experiences and background as an operator from the standpoint of security, as well as software engineering and data engineering, all the fun stuff that comes with engineering. Uh, and what we're going to talk about adjacently today is uh, Blumira, as we are a SIM plus XDR, how that really kind of impacts the market, at least how I believe it impacts the market, and then answering any questions you have uh, around XDR or SIM or security or anything you happen to uh, throw at me, I suppose. Uh, and in general, the agenda for today is really just to kind of focus on what we're doing, at least in the short, like next few minutes, what we're doing from the standpoint of the SIM-based XDR, how I and we believe it empowers organizations to really be successful from a security and compliance and risk perspective. Uh, and why, you know, there are better approaches out there than what we are used to seeing in the market. I say that in a very biased way, I fully admit. Um, but there is a reason that there needs to be changes in the market. And I think a lot of us have felt that over the years that in general, there is a need for the security, cybersecurity industry to make things easier for for all of us. It just It just has to happen. So as we look across kind of the last four or five years, or how long ago, 2018, five years ago, nearly six, my God, um, that's terrifying. Uh, we look across the time when XDR did start, it was 2018, it was by Palo Alto, uh, their CTO over there, 
And it was primarily started because they needed to bring together a suite of products. They had Palo Alto traps, they had their firewalls, they had Panorama, and they needed to bring them together into a single kind of pane of glass, as it were. And that's really where XDR kind of started. It was companies realizing like, oh, well, threats happen at the endpoint. We have endpoint view and we could correlate this data together and at least it would be moderately more usable and we could sell it as a package, which is always a valuable thing for an organization. But what that didn't necessarily do was make XDR or SIM or the technologies around them more accessible to SMB. It didn't really necessarily improve detection either. But what it did do is bring together a variety of different views into a single pane, which I think is something that we've all wanted in security, but not necessarily have had. Did it really improve security outcomes, though? Not, not necessarily, specifically because XDR is where it started, Palo Alto, Fortigate, the large organizations, um, they are not accessible to the large majority of organizations out there. And that's really what we're going to talk about today. How do we really get an accessible XDR for people? And as we saw with Cisco acquired Splunk as their SIM, they're looking to really bolster out that XDR offering as well as, you know, gain, you know, 500 million in ARR never hurts as well when you buy someone for that much money. But the real kind of impact for Cisco is, well, now we have a more of a package. We have a bigger package. We have Cisco AMP. We have Splunk. We have all these things we can put together, but it's still not something that's serving the SMB. Because in general, we see the same challenges across SMBs. We know that there aren't enough people to run these kind of programs inside of organizations because there just aren't enough people in cybersecurity and IT to do it. Or, or, you know, for the sake of their sanity, they don't have the time or wherewithal to want to do it, which... As someone who's been on call for about 15 years straight, I, I very much understand. There just isn't enough time in general to do a lot of this work. And, and for the most part, most organizations, you know, just the focus on vulnerability management and getting stuff done is just enough to let alone add in, well, now you need to do threat hunting. You need to figure out how to build detections. You need to figure out which detections are good for you. And you need to make sure this data works for you. And you have to make sure that you're meeting compliance. And all of these kind of different areas create this complexity that is nearly impossible for organizations to really operationalize successfully in the kind of formal world of SIM and XDR right now. So how does Bloomer look at it? Uh, we look at it from a SIM-driven XDR approach, which is to say data is the most important part of it. Getting that data in, having a holistic view of that data, and being able to really treat that as a important and you know, relevant piece of data that's going to meet the security and compliance needs that you have in your organization. And realistically, that isn't necessarily what all security solutions do. Um, there's a lot of security solutions out there that do a very good job at detecting threats that don't necessarily help you in compliance. And unless you are a big organization, you don't likely do not have the resources to buy into multiple different types of technologies and still get what you need out of that output. Uh, and when you don't have a big team, it just ends up being the situation where you have this kind of like unfairness um, level that happens to the SMB side, especially in cybersecurity, that makes it a lot more difficult for them. And kind of the most important thing of, at least in my opinion, of the SIM-driven XDR is that it breaks the kind of inherent focus we see in XDR right now. So you see it from CrowdStrike, Sentinel-1, Palo Alto as well where there's this focus on the endpoint. And the idea essentially is that the endpoint is the thing that gets attacked, therefore it should be the thing that you alert on. And that's very true, but it is not the only thing. It is there are other areas we see, I think all of us have seen business email compromise from the standpoint of Microsoft 365. We see attacks against cloud. You can look to all of the recent Okta breaches as it pertains to the people performing administrative actions that they were not aware of inside of their Okta environment. So it's really important to expand that model to not just the endpoint, but also services that your users are using, where there's permission data, anything that could happen. It's important to really kind of take that XDR model and say, well, where could the threats and risks be? Let's make sure that we can pull that data in, correlate it across everything, and really give you the view that's necessary. And that's really what the SIM-driven XDR approach is. And in general, it's really just these kind of like main and key advantages that you get a very broad ability to pull in that data, that it scales for you, especially if it's a cloud-based SIM XDR like Bloomer is. Uh, it makes sure that you can really have the robustness you need from a detection standpoint. 
there's very few organizations in the SMB world that have the time to do threat hunting. Even if we love to do it, even if it's the best part of security is threat hunting and red teaming. There isn't enough time, generally speaking, for all of us to do that. Organizations that are simplest XDR, like Blue Mira, we have our own detection engineering team. They're looking at the data, they're evaluating those, and that makes it just much easier for organizations to be more successful in the world of SIM and XDR for that matter. Uh, and of course, getting up as fast as possible and making sure that there's experience built into that and making sure that you get the workflows needed to solve those problems is just as important. Um, one of the areas that, that Blue Mira pushes on very hard is that it's very easy to set up. It's very easy to get going. And that's not because we're tooting our horn and saying things should be easy and that's the way it should be. It's very important in the world of security for the industry to move in a direction where things are easier to onboard, solutions are easier to engage with, and you're able to get value out of them faster. It, it's, you know, the tendency over the last, you know, 10, 20 years to have technology that takes six months, a year, years to really see true value out of. It really should and cannot happen anymore. Attacks are too rapid and you really have to mature that program as fast as possible. There are a few different types of XDR, of course, out there. Um, generally speaking, the ones that I'm going to focus on are going to be like SIM plus XDR, um, closed XDR, and EDR-based XDR, and I'll, I'll come back to that as well. And generally speaking, kind of the way that, that we look at them and across the market is how they really impact the users associated with each of them. So in the case of a cloud-native XDR, we're really talking about those solutions that are out in the cloud. You're going to ship your data up to the cloud, and it's going to do stuff. The best benefits, of course, is that it scales for you, right? Like when I talk to my engineers here at Blue Mira, I tell them it's our responsibility to scale for the customer. It should not be something that they, you, they ever have to think about because let's be honest, it's like the worst part of cybersecurity, like trying to figure out how to really kind of scale things up fully. And it's also just as important to make sure where it's agile and it's easy to deploy for the organizations. And at times it can be costly. There are cloud-based XDRs out there that just get very expensive just because of the nature of how they build. Do they build by cost? Do they build by volume? How do they build by user? Do they build by asset? It really is important to the organization and to you when you move into buying these types of technologies that are really best for your organizations. And the last two I'm gonna run through fast is, is I think we're gonna start getting some questions in here, uh, is the closed XDR and EDR based XDR, which are very similar in kind of their own ways. Uh, a closed XDR is going to be the one that we started talking about. Palo Alto, FortiGate, CrowdStrike, Sentinel One. They're really focused on their technology. They are often quite expensive. Not always. In some cases, they are. They're not horribly expensive, but they usually have a higher total cost of ownership. You're going to have to put work into it. The data that you're putting into it, unless it's their data, probably is not going to be a first class citizen. And you're going to have to do work to get true value out of that closed XDR outside of their their kind of ecosystem. Which is to say, you know, if you're on Palo Alto, you have traps, you have Palo Alto firewalls, it's probably going to do a very good job giving you that view. But the moment you want to expand that view into, well, I want to look at my 80 audit logs, I want to look at my 365 audit logs, I want to grow how I'm leveraging this, the value is much harder to realize, generally speaking. And the EDR base XDR is very similar. Like they're they're very powerful. Sometimes it can be too D. Uh, too difficult to kind of roll into the environment because you have to do tuning. You have to determine the best way to kind of fit into your environment. They have envir They always have capabilities that you need, but one of the areas that I like to really focus on is you don't want to silo your data. And depending on specifically EDR or an NGAV to load that data into the XDR is often not enough. More data never hurts. And EDR-based XDRs often kind of push their data into a situation where the telemetry is kind of behind their fancy models for detection. And the exposure of that telemetry is very valuable as well. And in general, there's a variety of kind of different benefits, pros and cons associated with each of them. Um, but from our, you know, my very biased opinion, uh, the ability to really focus on what SIM was and is, which is the ability to evaluate data push that data out and do detection on it while giving the ability to also kind of focus on solving those problems from an XDR perspective, which is to say holistic data, bringing that data together in a single view, providing workflow automation, 
all of those kind of bought, brought together uh, offers a product that is in general more powerful than, you know, most things. We'll put it that way. <clears throat> I see we're starting to get questions. I love this grid, Matt. I think this is fantastic. And we are, uh, I bet some people will be taking screenshots right now, but we are working on having this easily available as a takeaway. We may not have that by the time we send you the recording here, but um, I'm going to send out for anyone who has questions after this, um, and, and we are going to get to the questions. I'm putting the cart before the horse here a little bit. Um, my email is just Kim at bluemira.com. You can feel free to send me any questions you have, and I'll make sure they get to, uh, the right person here. So, um, All right. we are going to switch over to questions. I think, are you ready for that, Matt? Sure. Let's do it. I think we have some stumpers. Um, and the product questions are going to be easy, but, um, I, I thought I saw a couple of philosophical things come in too. So I can't wait to get those over into your brain. Let's start with the, um, let's start with the first one. Do you, right. do you, and, and we have, we, Joel, we're going to do yours second about semantic, but uh, the first one is, do you have to have a SIM to use XDR? And I don't know if this question was specific to Blumira, um, which the answer there is yes, but um, I, I think that it's a more general question. So this is an area that that can be you know very iffy depending on the organization, um, and this is where organizations can often get caught in buying into an XDR and realizing that they have compliance requirements that won't necessarily be served by the XDR and or will end up becoming more expensive because of the kind of the choices that were made, which isn't necessarily a wrong choice. It's just one of those like ah oh, yeah right the whole compliance thing, uh, and <clears throat> in general. You don't need a SIM to have an XDR. The way to really kind of that I look at this and that uh, I would recommend other people look at this is what do you need out of your data in your environment? Are you just trying to solve specific use cases that are concentrated to, let's say, your endpoint and you're looking at the Sentinel One XDR product? There might be value in only getting an XDR and not worrying about a SIM in that case or leveraging kind of their data lake product. However, what we know from the market and, and what some of you may have experienced already is that if it isn't a SIM that's backing that XDR, or if you don't have a separate SIM, you often run into situations where you have a really hard time getting the value out of your data that you need for compliance or insight, or I know this is going to be a question coming up soon, UEBA, to really see the true value out of your data, which isn't to say that a SIM can't do that, an XDR can't do that, but being able to pull those two together uh, allows a lot more power and a lot more fidelity in your data. And it, honestly, it reduces your cost to have those two as one thing. That being said, it's not required. Uh, it really depends on your goals as an organization. And uh, we believe, of course, here at Blue Mirror that they should be put together. Uh, but if your organization has no compliance requirements and you just want to throw an XDR at it, it definitely can happen. Not what I would recommend, but it'll work for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. Now we're going to go over to one that's really specific and I think comes in from an existing customer. So um, this one says, I use semantic endpoint security complete for my endpoints. Do you have plans to integrate with this EDR software? Mm. And it goes on. Uh, if not, do you have a published list of EDR solutions you work with or other options available? We use Bloomera SIM, um, but I'm told SESC, which is that semantic endpoint security, yep. does not have required integration currently. Great question. Um, we haven't support. We we supported semantic a couple of years ago. We dropped some of the support as they moved into their kind of more cloudish stuff that they have a source of a semantic. Uh, it's not currently on the roadmap. That doesn't mean it won't be on the roadmap. It's something that that I would love to have a longer conversation about. If you're looking for the other integrations we support. Uh, Bloomira.com slash integrations will have the list of EDRs that we do support. We like a lot of them. We, of course, have our own uh, EDR inside of Bloomira agent as well, but that's not necessarily the same thing. So I'm going to stay away from, from necessarily just pitching the agent to you, although I think you should all use it. Um, really more from the standpoint of value we see uh, uh, is where I'll answer this question. So we have a lot of people using CrowdStrike, a lot of people using Sentinel One, some people using Defender, ATP, some just using Defender for Windows as well, of course. And 
and, and silence and you know all all of the things out there at this point for from an EDR perspective. And one of the most interesting things from from my perspective is the EDR that can be best for the organization is one that outputs the most data and telemetry. If you are in an EDR that is only doing detection and you're really only kind of seeing those like, oh, I got an ML detection for that thing and that's not really anything again. I think it's worth looking for additional EDR technologies to see what additional value you could get out of it. Those EDR technologies have so much data that they can pull out of your environment and just visibility you can get into your environment that it's worth seeing what other EDRs that Bloomira supports, let's say, for example, but just in general are out there that can drive additional value for you. Uh, that being said, um, I will chat with my product person after this and we'll see where we can fit in Semantic because Semantic is by no means a small EDR. So, yeah, Great. Uh, you want me to just like run down these questions? So I see them. Um, I really I like to read them out loud to you. Please, by all means, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, is your sim integrated with UEBA and SOAR? This is a great question. Um, it is. It, it's kind of like a, a classic um, security industry question, right? Like, where does UEBA fit in? Where does SOAR fit in? What is SIM? How do they all integrate together? Bloomir is of the opinion that UEBA and SOAR almost need to be kind of integrated into the SIM platform. And that's that's partly why we evolved into an XDR platform. Now, that's not to say that, you know, UEBA needs to be or should be, although it's nice when it is, as complex as something as Exabeam um, or SOAR as complex as something as Phantom as it, as it pertains to something like Splunk. We, as a, as a SIM inside of Bloomira, handle this in a few different ways. From a UEB, UEBA perspective, we do a lot of evaluation of audit logs, login logs, how people are authenticating and using the environment. And that can range from, you know, impossible travel, looking at Microsoft 365 logs, to ascertaining if someone is accessing too many files inside of your, your SharePoint, to really a variety of different ways. So our, our view essentially is that UEBA is just analytical detection as it pertains to user behavior. It is not it is not, and probably shouldn't be a whole separate segment in the industry, especially in the SMB world. Uh, because in most cases, when you say UEBA, you're kind of pushed into the situation of, well, I can spend $300,000 at Exabeam and send them half of my data, or I can do nothing, or Veronis or a few of the other ones out there. And there, there are very few solutions that are really focused on the SMB and focused on solving the problem associated with UEBA. So we do a lot of UEBA. I wouldn't like put myself on the Gardner quadrant for UEBA, but I would put Bloomira up against a large majority of UEBA products out there to show that we can do detection associated with it. Uh, and on the SOAR side, we do a variety of pieces that I would say are in line with what SOAR is. And we're going to be continuing next year to do a lot more with SOAR and responsive capabilities. But for right now, I just give everyone some guidance as to, to how Bloomira kind of fits into this. We do workbooks, we do playbooks that are focused on each and every detection that comes out of the environment. And they're generated for you just as much as the analysis is inside of those, what we call findings, uh, alerts associated with your threats. We find that those have a lot of value and those are written by our detection engineering team and they're built automatically when your detections occur. So we, we are trying to kind of go about the SOAR aspect and the way that it drives the most value for organizations that really kind of need to move into SOAR, but don't want to feel the pain of SOAR at the enterprise level. Uh, the other way is that we really handle the responsive side. Uh, we have our own threat feed aggregation with automated block listing. So for anyone with a like a modern firewall, you know, Palo Alto, Checkpoint, FortiGate, you can leverage our existing threat feeds that we pull out. You can automatically add IPs to those. They will automatically block those attacks uh, inside or out. And it really gives the, the ability for easy, you know, no waking up in the middle of the night when someone is password spraying your environment, being able to block those IPs. Uh, the other area that we're really pushing hard on SOAR is on the standpoint of host isolation and looking into the future, more automation on the side of Microsoft 365 users, Active Directory users, and in general, more kind of, we'll say, finesse in regard to response against the actual host itself. So killing processes versus isolating the host itself. So there, there are a number of areas that we leverage SOAR and SOAR-like capabilities ranging from 
automated response to automated generation of workbooks to automated generation of analysis. And we will continue, of course, to grow out a lot of those response capabilities over the next year. And we would love for those of you who are customers to give us your ideas. And for those of you who aren't to become our customers and give us your ideas, because we would love to do more there. Great. Thanks. Okay. Next up. We need the SIM to fulfill NIST SP800-171 security controls. Will the XDR suffice? It depends on the XDR. It's probably the, the most like even-keeled way to put that. So some XDRs will suffice. Blue Mirror, for example, will give you what you need to meet NIST 800-171. Uh, we have built-in reports inside of the report builder. You can just go send your data and you'll, you'll get everything you need. However, there are others that will really kind of make it, in some cases, more difficult to make that work, either because by nature they are an EDR-based XDR, so they're pulling in all the audit logs you need to meet the compliance associated with NIST, or you can get them into that platform, but you need to build your own detections, you need to build your own reports, you may need to build your own parsing to an extent, and you'll have to get that data in. And in some cases, you're going to have to pay more money to kind of start to engage with the SIM side of that XDR solution. So it's it's very much one of those areas that's going to depend a lot on what you need out of your solution. And if you need compliance, and especially if you need NIST compliance, where you're going to be retaining data for a longer period of time, you're going to need to evaluate that data over time, run reports, see how you're doing. I always recommend looking closer to the SIM side of technology than the XDR side of technology because pivoting away from the XDR into a SIM is going to be just as hard if a year from now, if you don't kind of make that decision at the beginning of that process for your life cycle. So, I, you know, very biased. I built a SIM, I realize, uh, but the SIM will definitely make life much easier just from the standpoint of reporting and meeting the compliance of your auditors. Awesome. Thanks. Matt, I think we can go ahead and stop sharing this. Um... Oh, sure. Yeah. I guess I, there you go. That's me. Hi. Hello. <laughs> okay. These are going really well, I think. Anyone Perfect. in the audience, you can give us feedback how, how these answers are going to these questions. If you feel like you're uh, getting your questions answered or not, you can give us feedback and, and ask more questions. Take all, um, the all of it. So next one, do you feel the industry has shifted away from MDRs or managed detection and response and is moving toward XDR solution as the new normal? Well, I could talk about this for about four hours and I won't because no one wants that. Um, I think the industry is shifting away from MDRs. I believe the industry is shifting away from MDRs exclusively because there is not enough people to run MDRs. Uh, we, we can see... You know, inside of the industry, we can read them, like all of us read the news. We all watch how the industry is going at this point. And when we see stories for years on end that are, well, there aren't enough employees in, in security. There aren't enough people in security. We need more people in security. How can we get more people in security? The kind of continuous growth we see in MDRs is not tenable in the grand scheme of it all. Um, there are not going to be enough people to really execute this. And the worst case for a lot of organizations, and I say this as someone who has run an MSSP, has run a SOC, has run an MDR, the worst kind of um, impact you get from a customer side is you don't know who that tier one analyst is. And often it's going to be a very high churn job just because it's not an easy job. For those of you who've done tier one analysts, you know it is an incredibly hard job. You burn people out regularly. You really have to keep continuously moving people up that line. And it's made MDR technology while powerful and from a business perspective, an amazing way to offset risk, which is primarily where MDRs have been driven from. They don't necessarily help the organization. And this is my, my very much my own opinion here that in general, organizations are better off growing their IT environment while leveraging something that's a more powerful you know, SIM plus XDR or XDR solution to really drive success inside of their environment that's accessible for the IT people in that organization. Most SMBs do not have security staff, so they try to offset that with MDRs, but an MDR does not solve the problem necessarily. It can be really hard to get the feedback you want. And in a lot of cases, 
the MDR will not have the context that your staff does. Because, you know, in the case of, let's say, adding a domain admin, there's only one person that knows if that's real or not, and that is the person in your organization, generally speaking. Now, if a random rogue account made the domain admin, sure, there, there's probably some clear risk there that we know that something weird happened. But if John Doe, who's your employee, created a domain admin and they have the right to create a domain admin and your MDR takes 24 hours to call back and say, hey, this is a weird thing, that's really not helpful to you. You're better off really actioning that directly to John Doe and saying, hey, did you do this? And really pushing that to them and saying, hey, let's make you accountable and really kind of give you the power to say, yes, I can be not only an IT person, but I can support the security side of my organization as well. So I, I, I do think you're going to see continuous pivots into XDR. I mean, you're going to see XDR MDRs, which is just too many acronyms, generally speaking, all wrapped together. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I do think you're going to continue to see this pivot into extended detection and response. MDR is layered on top of it to an extent, but I don't know how much longer MDRs can really push forward with the idea that, you know, eyes on glass is not really as impactful as it was 10 years ago, for example. There's there's too much and there needs to be more structure around it. Great. And I think you, in a roundabout way, answered one of the other questions, but I'm going to toss it out anyways. Yeah. Any future plans for an MDR service offering? Probably not. So generally speaking, Bloomira has a very strong partner side of the company. So we work with a lot of MSPs. We work with a lot of MSSPs. And for organizations that need that additional layer, we strongly recommend, you know, we'll, we'll help you find an MSP if you don't have one yet. Uh, we'll help you find an MSP if you don't, that's what you're looking for instead, uh, to help you support the Bumira side. That being said, I'm going to go directly back to what I just said. I think it's really important for organizations to grow their internal staff that can action these things and have a tool that can allow them to do that. Now, if you don't have that team in place yet, you 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 don't have an IT team at all. Let's say, for example, you're just someone who realized like, oh, we need to figure this out. I think MSPs are a great way to layer in between those two sides. We don't likely will not ever have an MDR service, um, but I have some ideas as to how I get people to what amounts to an MDR service without needing to depend on really the the hope that there will be a person there that knows exactly what they need to know. Uh, Cause that's really what, what, what it ends up being of like, I get up at 3am and I really hope that person knows what, what I want them to know. And in a lot of cases they won't know because it's not possible for them to know until they get additional contact. So it's, it's, it's something that we probably won't do now. Ask me again in a year, maybe that'll change. But um, I, I personally believe that, with the increase in validity when it comes to like LLMs and AI with the right training and with the right data being available to them, I believe that there is a, an opportunity over the next year for security to move away from depending on these people that, that don't exist in the industry, to be quite honest, um, because we are short in humans in this industry and move us more toward technology to really drive that forward. Awesome. Um... I haven't seen that philosophical question come through that uh, I had an attendee tell me they were going to toss out there. So I'm going to keep going here yeah, sure, yeah. with the business questions. Okay. Does the XDR have playbooks and templates to modify? So everything inside of our kind of Bloomira SIM plus XDR product uh, is driven by playbooks. So any detections you get, will get playbooks associated with them uh, and allow you to kind of have comments and they have they each have their own kind of like um, like container for uploading evidence and that kind of thing. We don't currently allow people to modify those playbooks primarily because Bumira believes we should be opinionated and provide that information to people. That being said, it is something that we've heard from other customers. It is definitely something that we've heard broadly, especially as it pertains to, well, I'd like to make my own detection. I'd like to make my own playbook so I can do my own thing internally. So I, I would expect that over the next kind of 12 months or so, we'll be getting a lot deeper into that question and saying, what more do organizations want from a customization point of view? But in my experience, you know, the first six months of leveraging a new piece of technology like a SIM, like Bloomira, is really about, well, for Bloomira getting on board in the first like three days, but generally speaking, the first six months are that like, 
where is the status of my company? What are we at? What do I need to fix? Do we have a process to run this? Do we? Great. Let's move into customization at that point. So I, I, I'll put it as more in the future, more as we continue to grow here at Plumira. Uh, but I would recommend um, leveraging what's available to really kind of evaluate where you are as an organization because we all have like a million things to do. So why not take like five things off your plate kind of thing? Okay. Uh, so we've got a few more here and sure. uh, I'm on Pacific time. It's 1036. So I want to thank everybody who's uh, staying on with us and just uh, give you a chance to ask any other questions that you've got while we get down to, I think we've got our last two or three questions here. So, okay. Can you see in the platform errors in data coming in? Does it remember the sort of data it should be seeing coming in from a type A endpoint, such that if it sees missing data from another type A environment, it alerts an analyst, provides a log to troubleshoot, um, or if a tool is not working as it should? We don't currently track data that doesn't exist. And I, I, um, I know exactly what's being asked here. And it's something I've been asked historically as well. And you get into proving a negative, which is a bit of an interesting place to be in computer science where you're saying, well, should the data be there? And we are working on a solution right now um, called Simple Search, which will essentially allow us to do this for organizations to see where they're missing data between different endpoints or what kind of data is being sent from those endpoints. But generally speaking, the way that we approach this is by ensuring that our, I'll, I'll talk about it from the standpoint of our agent at the very least, that our agents are all managed remotely and they're all managed to deliver data in the way that we want them to deliver data. So there is no possible way, and this is the same on Poshum for those of you who are using our, our older kind of legacy setup. When you run Poshum, when you run the Bloomira agent, it sets up the data collection for all data available on that endpoint. So if there is audit logs, if there is uh, IES on that endpoint, if there are, if it's a DC, so there's directory services on that endpoint, those will be automatically pulled down by the agent or set up automatically as it pertains to the actual um, endpoint itself. And it will pull that data down and ensure that we're getting it out of there. Um, we do of course track errors. We pull a lot of that information out. But a lot of what we do, honestly, is make sure that the way that we're collecting this data is very robust and it allows us to ensure that we're getting the most data out as possible. We pull in probably about 100 terabytes of data a month, a little more than that, probably maybe closer to 150 terabytes a month right now. And yeah, probably a little more than that, actually, at this point. And you know, we very rarely see any issue with data ingest. And that's primarily because we built the solution from the ground up. Like nothing in Bloomera is like, like we didn't take Elasticsearch off the shelf, jam it in and be like, yes, this is what's here. We built Bloomera from the ground up exclusively because of issues like that in our past. Um, and I realize I'm saying like, I'm proving a, a thing that you can't tell that's happening, but it is something that we very much care about. Uh, and it's something that, you know, it needs to happen as a part of the process that isn't required by the user. Uh, like on the back end, we can see when there is an increase in errors. You can see it as well inside of your product if you want to look at them, of course. But there's a reason why we manage all of our own parsing and all of our own ingest and all of our own configuration. And it's primarily so people don't have to do it. Um, so the, there is definitely some things we're working on that will be coming out in the next quarter-ish. Uh, that will provide visibility into these things if you have a desire to to look into them and to get visibility into it. Um, but I think Lumira does a very good job of allowing organizations to not have to do that. And I, I would look at that as like taking mental load off more than anything else. Great. Okay. Get a couple more. Um, this is a little philosophical. Is complete threat visibility achievable or just an aspiration? How much detection is enough? Hmm. Well, I don't, there's no such thing as being secure is probably the best way to put that. Um, there's, uh, it's very easy. No, that's not the right way to put it. It's straightforward. We'll use that way to put it to get to the ability to have broad visibility across your environment. The, the practice of defense in depth has not changed. 
like realistically, you could go back 20 years when defense and I don't know, probably about 20 years ago when defense and depth was started as a as a theory, and that has not particularly changed uh, from then to now. So I do think it's possible to get enough coverage to always see when you're under attack. I very much believe that if you're detecting at broadly across your endpoints, broadly across your endpoints from an EDR as well as on system log perspective, because you need both as well as your cloud environments, as well as your firewalls, you can get very close to broad detection coverage. Now, being secure means that you've responded to every single one of those things perfectly. And that's where this gets difficult. And I don't care if you have automation. I don't care if you have a big sock. I don't care if you're a Fortune 100, because you can read the news every day and see that this is not the truth of the matter. It is just one of those areas where it is an inherently difficult thing to ensure that you're responding. Blumira tries to solve some of those problems by reducing your noise and doing very targeted detection. But it's, I, I, you know, it's, it's very much specific around, are you sending enough data in to get that visibility? Are you getting it from every piece of your kind of environment? And what are you missing? Because that's often where people tend to get caught is you forgot a server that was sitting on the internet. You forgot a cloud environment. And it's not like you forgot it maliciously. It's because we all have a million things to do and it just happened to not get covered. So it, it very much is related to what is your kind of appetite to buy into that solution? How are you kind of adopting it? Lumira solves this problem by basically being like, just send us all your data. We don't care. Like just send literally all of it. And that allows organizations to get that level of visibility. And that can be damage to an extent when you use a solution that is volume based you pay for volume for example so i i do think it's possible to get to full detection coverage i do think it's possible to have defense in depth in total we'll say across your environment it's a hard effort it requires you to put in the effort to get that data out and be using a solution that makes that easy for you um but you have to respond if you want to stay secure that's the big one uh, and you, and I don't mean you as in like your MDR provider. I mean, like, you know, like what's happening in your environment and you can solve it. Cause if you get hit, your MDR provider is not going to like feel super bad about it. Like they're, they're going to, they're, you are one of many who has gotten hacked in that situation. So it is your thing to make sure that you are feeling comfortable about how your environment looks. So yeah, we'll, we'll say yes, possible to detect, not possible to be fully secure. That's not a thing. You will always, always be at risk of getting attacked. However, you can stop those before they get bad. And that's really what the goal is. Awesome. Okay, we have a few more. Sure. Um, does the XDR provide file integrity monitoring capability? Ooh, FIM. One day, and no one will talk about FIM again. The industry will love that. But that, that isn't, we are not there yet, sadly. Um, we do not currently provide FIM. Uh, I know you are the, the person asking is not the only person to ask. We have been asked this a number of times. Uh, we will be looking at this in 24. I can promise you that. Um, we do have a path to doing FIM right now. Generally speaking, the way that we approach FIM, which is not the formal way to do FIM. So if you're on PCI, uh, you might have to argue with your auditor, um, is generally that we do kind of more file-based access alerting. So is someone accessing your Etsy shadow inside of your, your Linux machines? Is someone accessing sensitive files inside of your environment? That's generally how we approach that from the FIM side. Now, if you're looking for your formal FIM, where it's a, we're going to hash these files, we're going to look to see if they changed over time, and then we're going to alert based on that. Boomer does not yet currently do that. There are very few XDRs that do. FIM is still really a very specialized technology, primarily because it exhausts all of us in the industry that it's still around. That's not to say that it's not useful. Like there are uses for it. I get it. Um, and it's something that we also have been been asked about. So it's, you know, if if it's something that people are looking for, they're really wanting a FIM and an XDR, like Blumira has a path to it. And we're definitely open to talking more about it. It's it's just one of those. I think for myself, I'm like negatively biased against FIM of being PCI compliant for so many years of my life. And it's like, oh, no, I don't have to talk about FIM anymore. But it is still a very important from a compliance perspective piece of it. So something that we definitely have on our, our radar. Great. We are down to the last question. Ooh. And um, 
this is this is a good one. I hope I'm going to read this uh, properly here. Uh, the person who asked if I do this wrong, just go on ahead and, and let me know in another question or in the chat. Does the XDR have the capability to produce evidence that a log is produced when there is a software change, such as after Patch Tuesday? Gotcha. Yes. So this is this is a actually it's a perfect question to compare Sim versus XDR. So if you had a pure XDR, pure we'll say a pure play XDR, pretending like like that's a phrase that people use in this industry. Uh, it's a phrase now because I used it. Um, in a lot of cases, that XDR, like we'll use Sentinel One Singularity as an example, it's going to pull down the EDR data. So you're going to get some amount of telemetry. You're going to get detections associated with in there. They're also going to pull down some amount of audit logs, which is not a bad thing. Like you're going to get some amount of authentication logs inside of that as well. What it's not going to do, unless you want to pay more money for volume and other stuff, is pull down your application logs, pull down your kind of broad event viewer logs out of your Windows environment or your other environments. And that's primarily because there's not kind of a perceived value in that data from a security perspective. It's this kind of goes back to that compliance side of this whole thing. And for Bloomira, that's really the main reason why we started as a, a SIM and then evolved into an XDR, and that we believe that data is of paramount importance. So inside of Bloomira, you can definitely generate a report of patches inside of your application logs. That is not a problem. Uh, I can think of a few customers off the top of my head that use those type of logs to just generate like, what did people install last week? We'll just drop the install shield logs out of all these devices and see what happened. Uh, similarly, we really like those application logs for things like um, like uh, uh, drive failures inside of machines, especially in Windows. When you have a drive that's failing inside of Windows, your smart drivers are going to scream at the event log about it. But generally speaking, you're not going to see that data if you're in a pure kind of security XDR because it's not going to pull that data down. Whereas for Bloomira, we kind of just believe that all the information could be important, so we want that data to be there. So if you have, let's say, a laptop on Bloomira and it has a failing disk, you're going to get an alert about it. And just the same for kind of your software installs, your patching, uh, very straightforward to say, all right, we want to run a report once a week that tells us all the patches that were applied automatically. Uh, and that's just part of your, your application event viewer. So we, we are always happy to pull down that data and we continuously expand that data as well. So uh, to give you an example, like uh, a year ago, year and a half ago, time is a, mis a mystery to me at this point, when the spooler uh, vulnerability came out, well, probably a year and a half ago, all Bloomira did at that point was then add the spooler as a log source and then turn that on for organizations. So in, in the case of like the agent, we just are going to automatically start pulling that data down. Whereas in a lot of solutions, they're really going to be focusing heavily on, well, I hope the XDR ML model will detect when this thing happens. And from our perspective, it is really a, I'd rather pull down more data and kind of going back to what we talked about before, I'd rather Bloomira scale out that data, not the customer, to get the value out of that data and really kind of deliver it. Because compliance, I mean, I'm sure security people would love for me to say this that aren't in GRC. Compliance is just as important as security for a lot of organizations. Like compliance drives security in a lot of organizations. It isn't necessarily to the, how it, Maybe it's quote unquote should go, but it doesn't mean that that's not what's happening. And it's important for organizations to be able to get the value they need out of the data available to them inside of their platforms. Awesome. That is, um, we're, we're almost done. Uh, oh. <laughs> you've got a, I think you have a final slide that uh, oh. you may okay. have a final slide that that's you were going to share. Idea. And um uh, in the chat window, I have given a note for everyone with a link to a webinar that we're doing next week. So we've got two webinars coming up that I wanted to share to you, and I'll share the other link in just a moment. The one that you're seeing in front of you on the screen is also the one that's mentioned in the chat, and that is with CEO Jim Simpson and Principal Product Manager Brett Bizdafka. And we'll really be talking about all of the uh, fantastic things that we have released in 2023. Uh, for the Blumera, Blumera platform, as well as what's coming in 2024. So we'd love to have you join us for that. And the link is right here if you wanted to go on ahead and register. We also have Matt uh, on a webinar with analyst firm 451 talking again about uh, 
XTR that's on November 15th. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to put that link into the window right now. Um, I, I guess I really want to thank everybody. We had fantastic attendance here and it looks like just about everybody stayed the whole time, which is wonderful. And that it probably means that you're not at all boring. Um, Um, thank God I wasn't doing this. No, it would have been great. Well, no, (laughs) you're you're just polite and kind. Um, I'm putting that 451 webinar right here into the chat. And uh, that is actually going to be on On24, not on our platform, but uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with that one too. Again, thank you to everyone who joined us today. We do really appreciate your time. And thank you, Matt. And we proved that we couldn't stump you, uh, which I have challenged everyone to do, and it hasn't happened yet. So we'll keep trying. We'll get there. We'll get there, I'm sure. (laughs) Take good care, everybody. Have a great day.